Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Moon Pressure Let's Plays. My name is Hecto, and today we are playing Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition, episode 36, I think? Yeah, and to commemorate our entry into chapter 11, I want to wear a different shirt. Hmm. hmm. I'll take the Patamon shirt out for a spin again. I think we cycled through all the new ones already. Okay. Last time we had some major revelations after our assault of the Valhalla server and subsequent destruction by Misria and the Eaters. And Kyoko said she needed some time, but we got a message from Nokia, yes, that's right. A message from Nokia, that is, from Omegamon. Hmm, it must be something important. My investigation is going to take a little longer. The Zaxxon Forum, eh? Go check it out. And check it out we will. On to Zaxxon Forums. <laughs> Oh boy, this looks a little bit uh, less lived in than before. Yeah, a lot of people got comatized last time, so... Hello, beautiful Zaxxon hacker. Our leader tends to keep his own company. In fact, I can count the times I've seen him on, on one hand. Okay. Nobody here in the back. Domineering Zaxxon Hacker. Zaxxon are the undisputed kings of hacking. I mean, with people like me manning the computers, would you think any less? Okay, and the one on stage does not like to talk. In that case, hello Nokia and hello Omegamon. Ah, hey, you're back! Dot dot dot. See Omegamon? Hector's here! Hector, I apologize for the inconvenience, but we need to talk face to face. Question mark? Yeah, it's surprising, I know. He totally grew up. I kind of miss Agumon and Gabumon, but look at how freaking cool he is! Yeah, that's an argument. <laughs> so yeah, Agumon has like, remembered what he forgot. The reason why he came to this world. Like, just just listen for a second. The music in the background. It's way too epic for just a casual chat at the Zaxxon forums. Sounds like something from Fire Emblem or something like that, yeah. Okay then, Amigamon, go right ahead! Thank you, Nokia. Now then, heed my words. I came here to save the world we Digimon live in. The digital world from destruction. Oh, his voice line was way longer than that. The digital world is falling prey to the fury of the Eaters. Oh, so you have the same problem as us. There are eaters on your world too? Yes, the digital world is an optimal feeding ground for the eaters who consume data. Even as I speak, they are infesting our world, eating away at it. 
I am a member of the Royal Knights, one of the ultimate Digimon guardians of the digital world. We Royal Knights serve King Yggdrasil. Why is it shortened to King Drazil? Hmm. He clearly said Yggdrasil, so... Hmm. Yggdrasil is the very order that exists to control the digital world. When Yggdrasil detected the Eaters, he monitored them and soon after deemed them to be errors that constituted a threat. Following his command, the Royal Knights began to search for where they came from in the hopes of completely annihilating them. We then determined the origin of the threat. It was in an adjacent world, in a certain cyberspace that had just been born in your own world. So Eden? What? A cyberspace in our world? Do you, do you mean? Yes, Eden. This network completely digitizes human consciousness to express it in cyberspace in the first system. Eden's avatars, human mental data itself, was what caused Eaters to appear. Even more so, in your real world, Human desire and spite, passion and rage were completely unchecked in the digital world you call Eden. Now that's a bit weird. Like, I, I just imagine it like the Eaters just pop into existence and immediately gain the ability to like world travel to planeswalk. That seems a bit like a bit like a high tier ability that a new life form just obtains just like that. Uh, but oh well, it seems to be that way. And we do know that like emotion seems to have significant effects on Digimon, and in turn probably their world as well. Eaters were born from that unique set of emotional data. So you go? Like ghostly boy? It can't be! Of course, there were Royal Knights who objected to such a hasty decision, myself included. However, there were many who agreed that this conclusion was correct. That the blame for all this lay with humanity. They seek to destroy the human world. Destroy it? When you say the human world, what are we talking about? Nakano? Tokyo? Japan? You can't mean... I don't know why they left Tokyo out of that, but okay. I do everything on this planet. Even if we were to eliminate the Eaters from our world, 
So long as their source, humanity still exists, they will only reappear. Only by wiping out the human race can the Eaters be completely annihilated. At least, that is the conclusion the others have reached. Digimon are... planning on destroying all humans? They are aiming to invade. The Royal Knights lead a large force and are planning a surprise attack. Invade? But how? Digimon can't, like, enter the real world. In the city you call Tokyo, Digimon are already appearing in your physical space, are they not? Gasp. The labyrinth phenomenon, yes. What we call a dimensional wall separates the world of the humans from our digital world. However, by creating a large enough hole in this wall to serve as a sort of door, the two worlds can be joined, their properties intermingling. As a result, Digimon can pass back and forth between our worlds. I wonder... Is Miseria cognizant of that? I wouldn't think so. She's probably just thinking, yeah, eaters are great, I want to control them, let's fuck up the world as much as possible for me to achieve that goal. But, or maybe she's working with with the Digimon to make the digital shifts happen, but nah. She seems too self-interested for that, so I wouldn't think so. <laughs> The increasing strength of the digital wave phenomenon in Tokyo is caused by ongoing attempts to open a massive portal into your world. Wow, we're going full Shin Megami Tensei with this. That is the Paradise Lost plan. Oh, so it seems Miss Rie is working with the Digimon because she is actively pursuing the Paradise Lost plan. I thought it was just a side effect and like the Digimon were like basically excavating the wall from the other side while Miss Rie weakens it from ours. Hmm. So Kishibe, who is implementing the plan, is either acting in concert with the Royal Knights, or... It is highly probable she's under mind control. Really? Really? I, I would be somewhat disappointed if that was the case. Because, like, she has been so evil up until this point. But on the other hand, it just makes sense that she would be under mind control, because we have two pieces of evidence here. One, she was given custody of Yuko after her, after Yuko's father and brother disappeared slash, slash fell into a coma. And she has been put in, in charge of the company as like a steward. And why would anybody do that if Miseria is Miseria and she's super evil? I mean, of course, yeah, it could have been a honeypot, like, she could have seduced Yuko's father into giving her the reins, but eh. And the second one is just last episode, where Yugo slash Yuko said Miss Rie, why? Like, Yugo was surprised that Miss Rie would act drastically and, and, like, try to harm and kidnap Yuko. 
So yeah, why would that be the case if not for Yugo's mental data still recording Miseria as someone who is on the side of good? Hmm. So, are there other Royal Knights here besides you? <laughs> The two worlds are not completely separated. There are several small dimensional cracks in the wall. I was able to pass through by adopting the smaller data forms of Agumon and Gabumon. So basically he was a zip file. <laughs> Losing a portion of my memories was an unforeseen complication. I would not be surprised if there were other Digimon who came through the same way. So, so I see. I will do all I can to prevent their invasion of the human world. It's neither right nor justifiable to destroy another world in an attempt to save our own. I cannot abide such a destructive solution. Omega Mon! You're right, and I feel the same way. Humans and Digimon ought to become better friends, not the other way around. There is something I need your help with, though. This is a riddle that even a royal knight such as myself cannot solve. Please help me uncover the truth of this situation so that we may resolve it. Gasp. I hope you didn't mind Omnimon's echo voice too much, but he had like a specific voice effect in the Japanese voice lines as well, so I tried to emulate that. I hope it's not, it hasn't been too egregious. Well, nothing I can do about it now, but eh. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Verification took longer than I expected, sweetie. But there's a reason for that. A number of interesting things have come to light. Return to the agency. We need to plan our counterattack ASAP. We're coming too. We have to tell her the news. I kind of want to see Omega Mon just sit on the couch in, in the investigation bureau here. <laughs> that would be so funny. Sorry for the delay. Okay, Kyoko, let's start the strategy meeting. There's still one important person who isn't here yet. Yeah, it's Arata. An important person? Who besides me? Ugh, you can't possibly mean... I came here because I heard there was going to be a strategy meeting to talk about how to get rid of Kishibe. But I see our wild one is here too. You want to talk? 
always making things more complicated just because you think you're some kind of legend, you emotionally stunted jerk face! You've always been like this! You up and disappear by yourself at under the under zero! You're no good at fighting as part of a team! Leave us alone! Sorry, but this strategy meeting depends on all of you. I need our wild one and our legendarily yet stunted boy to work together on this. I don't care as long as we can beat Kishibe. Let's get started. So says Arata. Any objections from our wild one? Hang on just a second. I want to tell everybody something. So that's the whole story behind the Paradise Lost plan. I see. Destroy the human world? Seriously? I wasn't expecting it to be that serious. <laughs> Now all my theories have been proven. Thank you, Wild One. Oh, don't give me that, Kyoko. You did not know that uh, the Paradise Lost plan was a plan of the Digimon to invade this world. You did not. Stop, uh, stop lying. Stop lying, Kyoko. You did not. Don't thank me. It's Omnimon who deserves all the thanks. And Kyoko, could you knock it off with the wild one thing? <laughs> Timmy, I think it's time to start the meeting for real now. We have fact A. The Akishibe's objective is to open a hole in the dimensional wall. A sort of dimensional door, if you will. Fact B. The Akishibe has abducted Yuko Kamishiro. These two facts cannot be unrelated. She must have a need of B in order to carry out A. Yes, well reasoned. And A has yet to be achieved. Our strategy must therefore allow us to both successfully rescue Yuko Kamishiro, as well as to stop all aspects of the Paradise Lost plan. Ah, uh, my brain hurts already! Really, just from that? We can't worry about the rationale for B right now. The plan is too bold as is. An excellent conjecture, true. But I have some new evidence I'd like to present. It should carry it, it should clear away your doubts. As vague as ever, you never change. Recently, 
Having run simulations on the labyrinth locations and the detectable digital wave flows, I've identified the existence of a large scale, stable, and regularly occurring energy locus. Wait, let me guess, let me guess. It's the sewers. It's the sewers. Because we haven't been there in ages, we have never explored that area properly, and it looked super cool. It's the sewers, isn't it? Isn't it? Dot dot dot. It is a circular flow of energy that covers all of Tokyo. I've named this circular network the Digital Line. Surprisingly, this energy locus, which is comprised of digital waves, is under human control. In all probability, it's under the control of Kishibe at Kamishiro. Oh, does not exclude the sewers yet, because there was that one circular room that was beneath the Kamishiro Corp, right? The Eden spots placed throughout the city also seem to be related to this energy locus. I get it. That network in Shinjuku where Hector jumped was part of it. Oh, so that's why we can just jump into air, maybe? Is he talking about the Tankmon incident? I think so. This is the secret behind the Eden spots. So, so there are pathways, sort of like lymph nodes. That's right. This network of lymph node like structures resembles ley lines. Conduits of supernatural energy known from antiquity. And, 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 the sewers were totally where Kyoko talked about Feng Shui. A digital version of an energy line. Kishibe must have spent a long time putting this digital line together. Digital wave the structure that cycles the digital waves seems to be a kind of energy reactor. The structure is truly well constructed. It stores, excites, amplifies, and releases energy. When the massive amount of energy stored in the digital line is released as a digital wave, I believe this door will open. Given how amplified I estimate this energy to be, I feel it is safe to say the Paradise Lost plan could be brought into fruition at any time. Furthermore, there's a place right now where the energy flow is changing drastically. Tracing that flow back, we arrive at Roppongi. Roppongi Beneath Roppongi is a Kamishiro research facility called the Roppongi Underground Center. Very dry, no? The name makes you think it's a government-related facility. Gasp! Yes! 
Yes, the underpass you investigated before. This is that certain facility that was back there. Yes, I am so good at this. Oh, I feel so proud of myself for guessing that. And I am hyped! Upon analysis of your log data, the coordinates match where you left Yuko. That's good to be the, that's got to be the nerve center where this is all based out of. If we attack there, we get Yuko. That's one victory. But how do we stop Kishibe's plan? If B is needed to achieve A, then when B occurs, if condition C is needed to achieve A, then B will... Stop, stop! My brain totally can't take it anymore! Shut up, Arata, you geek! Geeky Arata! We'll call you Gita for short! Huh? What? <laughs> it is okay, Gita. I think she said Orakun. But... I, I don't see how that relates to Arata and Otaku in any way, so I'll stick with Gita for now. We've got to interfere with her control of the digital wave itself. As I explained, the digital line is an artificial construct for controlling digital wave flow. That control occurs via various terminals, including the Eden spots for its functions. In other words, if we could jam them... That's it! You're talking about an analog method. In other words, knock out the power, right? So we're causing a blackout? Okay, I'm down. Exactly, but they must be aware of their own vulnerabilities and likely have backup power supplies already prepared. Therefore, we need to strike in multiple places at once, or our whole plan comes apart. So we need a lot of people and turn the power off? Okay, we have like three teams here already. And if Kyoko teams up with Wanyamon, then she could form a fourth team and maybe get Matayoshi and Date into the boat? Hmm. Who else is there? That's about it, right? You'd plunge all of Tokyo into a blackout. Leave this to me, Kyoko. Hang on! All of Tokyo? But who? Huh? What do you mean? I'm a hacker, right? And hackers can only do one thing, right? Better hope this never gets out. Otherwise, Arata's, Arata's absolutely screwed. Gather all my buds and then we hack into the power supply systems throughout the city all at once. We'll play nice, it'll take some time, but we'll be able to keep the range of effect to a bare minimum. I see. 
I had been thinking of asking you to hack into the various Eden spots here and there. Assuming, as we should, that Kishibe is full of lies, we should strike at the weak spots first. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness, as the saying goes. I've never heard that saying. Oh, it sounds cool. Excellent, Sun Tzu. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Okay, I don't get it, but I get it. It's like I don't got it, but I got it. If Arata is doing that, then we're going for you, Ko. Right, Hecto? <laughs> Huh, so good of you to grasp that so quickly. You should head to the Roppongi Underground Center right now, from the underpass. Hector knows the way, I believe. Then we start on our objective simultaneously. I'll leave Yuko to you guys. Okay, we're totally going to rescue Yuko and put a stop to the parachute court plan. Okay, this is pretty much a cut for the first half of this episode. Let me just get the Digiline messages out of the way. Mom says, the beauty of the moon and stars here is incomparable to that of Japan. Look! Yeah, okay. You forgot to attach an image file. Okay, yeah, this was part one, we got a lot of talking out of the way, and yeah, hope to see you in the next one, and for me I'll continue immediately.